This week I want to share with you how I did this mixed media journal spread focusing on our wonderful honeybees. I've used napkins, collage, modelling paste put on through a stencil, yeah. colours, hand lettering. And if you look closely you should even see the glint of gold in there. I'll just move that, maybe you'll catch that a little shine. My name's Liz Chatterton, I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I share a tip, trick or technique I wish I'd known about ages ago. And this week it's mixed media in my journal. So you can join in, I've done a little free digital download for you with lots of bee quotes which I hope might inspire you. There's a link in the description how you can get this for free. The hum of bees is the voice of the garden. My last page was about the garden. I'm just going to take those out so they don't get in the way, but put them somewhere careful so I don't lose them. I'm working in my, in my handmade journal, which has got heavy cotton paper in it, but it's very absorbent. And just as usual, I'm going to take a tiny bit of time to quieten down because I'm been so busy over the last couple of weeks really and just to think about bees they've been on my mind I think it's because it's a beautiful September day and then I read somewhere and I'll paraphrase this and I'll just start writing if bees uh, disappeared then there would be no pollination, no plants, no animals, no humans. And from what I remember, they reckon four years. I'm sure there's a fuller quote there. I just like to start the page putting down thoughts about bees and sometimes I sort of Google little saying I, something I read which is lovely and I might use in the final piece I don't know was I mean obviously we think of busy as a bee I guess that's what I've been over the past couple of weeks busy as a bee I did read one quote that I absolutely loved which was and I'm going to write this verbatim Bees don't know they're small, so they do great things. So just writing some thoughts about whatever subject it is that's on your mind breaks up that white page. It's all going to be covered, so the fact my handwriting's all full of the spellings wrong really doesn't matter. Now I want to collect together bits and bobs that I might use in the journal. And we've, one of the reasons we've been so busy is we've been having a huge clear out in the house and I found these old Winnie the Pooh books and of course Winnie the Pooh loved his honey. I wondered about maybe taking a page out of this. I was going to give these to the charity shop but I kept them. <laughs> and I found some other papers and things. I want the spread to be very bee, so yellows, browns, blacks I guess. And I found bits of paper, obviously from a previous project. I thought some musical notes might be nice just because the, the hum of the bee. Oh, I found this tiny bit of gold sparkly paper which I thought would be lovely and I wondered about some flakes of gold leaf because I'm thinking of golden honey. I actually found paper with a bit of gold and silver in. I found this napkin. What bee doesn't like a, a sunflower so I thought I'd use that. I did manage to find some bees, but when you're doing a spread, you know, you don't have to zoom out and buy stuff. This, I've got a little stash that I save all sorts from. And if you haven't got the perfect thing, just improvise. And then I've got this, which is mulberry paper. The foundation, I would work with some text and the napkin. Might utterly upset you. I do know because I was always told off if, as a child if I ever damaged a book. But I'm going to have to get over that. And I am going to damage a book. Oh, oh gosh, it does make me feel naughty. I think about where those might go. Napkins are lovely for journaling. 
but don't rush out and buy a whole load of them. I put a little plea out on my local Facebook group just in the village and said, has anyone got odds and ends? And very kindly, people donated odds and ends to me. Not as transparent as I wanted. I hoped that the text would show through. It might do when I'm, it's glued in place. Journal. I start with some writing just to centre myself. I might have, you know, in fact, look, I've got my water bottle here, even with bees. You know, make sure I've got a drink, just get my head in the right place, take some time out, think about where I might go, but know that the journal page might take me in the direction it wants. I'm going to rip some of this, I might overlap it there. Just that I ripped it because I think ripped edge is far nicer than cut edge. In fact, I could to stop that page feeling super balanced. I could say rip like that, couldn't I? If you want to rip your napkin as well, a trick can be to paint with water where you want to rip it and it makes it super easy to rip it in that direction. I don't mind straight edges at the corner of the pages but I just don't like them in the middle of my page. So again I'm just want to get rid of corner I think painting with the water and then it just follows the path and makes it really easy to rip and get a nice ripped edge. I've never used this mulberry paper so I don't know how it'll be whether it'll rip oh, yeah okay just thought it was nice because it's got so much texture without being really heavy. I don't want this to be too bitty. And I got this music just from again local charity shop. So you can pick up interesting papers and I think it's far nicer to find stuff rather than to go to a supplier, a craft supplier that sells you know perfect packs of matching everything so that you can do this. You kind of remember where things came from and kind of cool. Up to you whether you want to cover everything. I think I do want to cover my writing. wanted those gold things later. I mean I might add them at a later point so I'll just put it to one side with my gold leaf. I need to think where my focal point's going to be because I have in my mind that I'm going to have some white space and I want to do a little drawing or a little painting of a bee. If I make this all too busy there won't be space for that. I'm wondering about my focal point being more here. Some of this can be covered with gesso. So yeah, I think that'll be okay. I think I'll leave that for the time being because then I can always make my mind up and add further bits. The wonderful thing about doing journal is it can't go wrong because you can always add. I'm going to use matte medium to stick this down. It's, you know, great glue and it dries clear. It is archival, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to carefully move this off because the problem is you've just got your really nice arrangement and then you forget where everything's going to go. Pop a bit of matte medium out. And so a good rule with collage is always put the glue onto the heaviest paper. If I put the glue onto the very thin paper it might fall to pieces and I said I wanted that to cover where some paint had come through from a previous spread. You can put more glue over the top to help it stick down because you want this all to be secure and not to sort of delaminate on you. If things go over the edge we can tear that off when it's dry we can always amend things. Now as long as you're quite prompt 
you can lift up your pieces of paper if you realise that you should tuck a different edge underneath or you've put it in slightly the wrong place. So, you know, don't panic. Let's get these, some of these sunflowers on. They are quite an important sort of visual element and it'll be hard to, to sort of judge too much until they're in place. Be careful with any napkins as you stick them down. They're very fragile when they're wet. You don't want them to rip to shreds, do you? So again, this is going to be my sort of more my white space here. And I think we'll pop this into place here. Don't forget to wash your brush out once you've finished the sticking down because that glue will not wash out once, once it's dry. So the lovely thing about journaling is that actually you can take as much or as little time as you want. We could totally stop now if you, if you need to, let it dry, come back to it tomorrow, or we can carry on. And I'm obviously going to carry on. I think that I don't need to let this fully dry because what I'm going to do next is put some gesso on top. So is a primer. It, it prepares the surface and it stops this being really absorbent because if you put any water media onto the this particularly the napkin it will feather through and be quite ugly so if you put some gesso on it'll prepare the surface for for your paint and you can get white gesso and clear gesso because i don't want to put white gesso over everything and um <laughs> obliterate what i've put down i do want to put some white gesso in this area where it's going to be my focal point and the good thing is that it's not fully opaque in one coat so you can put some on and you should be able to see a bit of what's underneath and it can feather off and start to integrate some of those papers and I would say if you do anything in one area it's a good idea to do it's in another. We're looking at our journal page a bit like a seesaw in that we're looking for balance. Again, be very careful with that napkin surface so that it doesn't rip on us. And look to connect shapes as well so that it doesn't all become itsy bitsy. If you put on too much, you can use a bit of like a damp towel or a little cloth. While it's still wet, you can lift some of it out. So that's white gesso, say quite good for losing edges, feathering things out, knocking patterns back. Clear gesso is another primer, but dries clear. So this is from Liquitex, but generally, you know, you don't have to buy Particularly expensive gesso and to be fine that the more expensive white gessos cover more they've got a bit more pigment in so I'm putting on some clear gesso to seal this napkin particularly but it will dry clear so I can put that really everywhere that I didn't put the white if you see um, my garden spread the, the one on the previous page this one I sort of learnt my lesson that I didn't like how watercolor went on top of some papers so you know you, you learn from spread to spread what you want to do what effects you'll get so here I am just making sure this is all sealed and then this really, this certainly has to dry. Once this is dry enough, you could trim off any surplus. Again, a torn edge I prefer, but if you don't like that, you could always use scissors. So you can just trim off the excess. Unless, of course, you like having it hanging, in which case, Leave it.
not particularly happy how I tore that off but I'm not going to worry at this point because I've got something really exciting to do. I treated myself to a stencil and I thought it'd be nice to introduce some flower texture into this. I've obviously got the images of the flowers but to actually use some modelling paste to introduce a flower texture. This is my sample. So what I've done is put modelling paste through the stencil and then watercolored on top. Modelling paste is an acrylic paste to give, well, to give a bit of a 3D texture to, to your work. All sorts of different brands. This happens to be Pabio. So you need a palette knife and you put your stencil in place and you need to hold it still and you just scrape through your stencil I mean it's as easy as that be careful at the edges because again you don't want a sudden hard edge you want to maybe feather it out a little then you need to just gently pull it off and you can see the effect of the modeling paste you then need to wipe it wipe the stencil off before using it again both sides because just in case it has gone through where else that big flower there to join these flowers would be kind of cool so again I'm holding it in place and the good thing it just gives a really thin texture. Modelling paste is flexible, so as you turn the pages of your book, it shouldn't crack. And it doesn't add a lot of bulk to your page. Now, I'm not sure how that's going to work across the fold of the page, but the whole point of journaling is to experiment. You've seen my introductory film saying, you know, some people journal to, to work through emotional issues or just to give them a bit of space and a bit of me time. Some people use it as an experimental place for new materials and new techniques. So, do you know what? I'm going to do it across the fold and we'll see what happens. And if it's a disaster, well, I've learned something and if it's brilliant well I've learned something too so I quite like those areas and I hope that it will help frame my focal point that I'm thinking about and it's just a nice way of integrating the edges of some of your papers as well this has to be totally dry before we paint over it I want to add colour next but I want to protect the rest of my book. So I'm just going to pop sheets of just ordinary photocopier paper underneath just to stop things sort of soaking through. You could use acrylic paint if you want, but I don't want because I am a watercolourist and I tend to use up my leftover watercolour paints if I possibly can. So I've got a lovely big soft brush and I actually think some of this gungy brown here might be rather good. And because this is just about getting some colour in place, I'm going to use a big brush and I'm hoping some colour will disguise that bit that I didn't like that I when I ripped off. So I'm just washing the colour over that raised texture. You can see how the texture paste is sort of repelling the watercolour that's going into the sort of troughs. And so it shows up. I think it's really pretty. Right. Take some of this to the edge, the edge of the paper. 
and again trying to get a bit of a flow if you want to feather off the edges always use a bit of tissue because we've sealed underneath so it shouldn't soak through too much and it just really shows up that texture I think this is so cool you might want to darken corners and edges as well and that will again hopefully start to focus our, our eye into that central spot well it's not central it's off center and I will talk about in a moment why I have decided that's going to be my focal point and I hope you can see how we're getting that complexity of the the layers you can see some type through from that uh, the, the book the first layer then we've got the sunflower layer with the napkin now we've got another layer on top with the texture and the the masking uh, not masking fluid um, texture paste so we're building up layers and complexity as we go and you can do as many layers as you want and say something isn't quite to your liking well the great thing is that you could just cover it all over and start again right i'll let that dry and while it's drying i will find my b image and i have in my mind that i want to be nice honey bee to go here <sighs> and i was planning to draw it because i love drawing but i'm half tempted because that actually is pretty much the right size i'm half tempted to cut it out and collage that as well if you want to do that by all means you know find a printable find something like this that's your subject matter and you can absolutely cut it out you don't have to paint or or draw your subject matter um, let me just show you say on this one Yep, I painted my sunflower here. That's what I wanted to do. But, you know, th that is up to you. What I did want to just point out is why I've been saving this space. Oh, I'll just do it on the back of here. So there's a thing called the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds basically says that if you divide your paper or canvas into thirds each way, so it looks like a noughts and crosses board or I think um, North Americans call it tic-tac-toe. If it looks like that, then if you put your centre of interest at one of those, only one of those divisions, it will be harmonious. And if you put other important elements along these third lines, it will be a pleasing composition. And you might be looking at where there saying, well, that's not on the third line, that's almost pretty central in that page but you've got to remember this whole spread is is our page so even though that's that's our book and that's what it looks like so I divide that into three and that means our centre centre of interest is probably going to be there 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 or there so it's basically there 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 or there which is why I've been keeping that clear. And I think that's about the right place for my bee to go. And that will also allow my music to shine through. I'm looking at what's underneath. So I'm, I'm certainly using my, my artistic brain and thinking, actually, if it goes a little bit onto this paper as well, it will tie those together. That's about the right size. But can you see if I put it like that, it would take our eye out of the composition. It would look like it's about to crawl off the page. If I did it like that, well, that, that might, yeah, that might work because it's crawling into the composition or flying into the composition. I just feel going upwards is more positive, I guess. That feels a bit sort of downwards. If I did that again, it would be crawling off down here. So for me, that's where I want it to go. So somewhere like pixabay.com is a great source of illustrations as well as photos. I don't want this to be super precise. 
So that's a bit of yellow ochre. This is a little bit of cadmium yellow, just softening off some of that body so that it can be nice and fuzzy. I'm just bringing some of that colour into the wings for its lovely beady eyes. And I want to get some of this in while it's wet so that it spreads and goes fuzzy. I want, we want a fuzzy bee. And because we're working on the gessoed surface, uh, it shouldn't sink into the paper and it should behave itself. Just dropping a little blue into some of the dark areas, add a little bit of interest. So I have got a very thin, a 0.1 fine liner. This is a unipin, but it really doesn't matter. It's waterproof and it's light proof. It's a pigment ink. And I'm just going to work on top of the watercolour to give the semblance of detail without actually having a huge amount of detail. You may find that your pen slightly clogs because it is so fine. If that is the case, you just saw me scribble and clean it off. Just do that and you'll be okay. And I'll just use a little acrylic marker to give it a bit of shine on its eyes and possibly a little shine on its wings and face. So this is little acrylic marker. It's mm, flicy. I'm looking at the brand. Ah, it's like a Posca pen, but a cheaper version. So now we have decisions about whether we want to put text with this. I read out a few at the beginning of this, like the hum of bees is the voice of the garden. I don't know. I think that's a bit cliched. So I'm not sure. I need to have a think about this. And I, you don't, you don't have to put words in at all. I think it's fun to, but only if it adds to the image and to what you're trying to communicate. And I was thinking about the importance of bees and how I'd been a busy bee. And I read the one that was really resonating to me with me was bees may be small, but they are mighty. But and the one that they don't know they're small, so they can do great things. Let me just have a think of what I'm really trying to say. Right, I took a little bit of time out just to really think what I had been contemplating in my head while I was doing this. And as I say, it was the whole thing of being small, but still being able to do amazing things. And I think it's that together we're a lot better than being apart. So I was thinking, wow, how can I say that really succinctly? And I think it's, we're better together. I'm going to do it as hand lettering, which is very brave of me because my handwriting is awful. And I'm going to check the placement here. So I'm going to say we, and I'm going to change the font. Oh. I was hoping I'd be able to get some of the writing over to disguise that balloon, but I, it's not the right place. So what you can do, of course, is print it out on a piece of paper in a nice font, cut it out, put it in. But I'm going to put my big girl's knickers on and find a decent brush. That's a pretty good one. And do it in watercolour. And again, I might put a little bit of pen on to touch it up so it's like I did the bee. So we're going to go. I do admire people who do all this wonderful brush lettering. And then we're going to do this. 
doesn't matter if it goes wrong really does it i mean it'd be upsetting i guess because i really quite like this it wouldn't be the end of the world and i'm sure i'd find a way around it have i spelt it correctly i think i have i'll let this dry and then can just rub out the pencil now what i want to do is give the impression of some honeycomb and i thought if i used some bubble wrap and printed with it i would get some random dots that would give the impression of this honeycomb i don't want it to go over my bee so i need to just mask my bee off just using a thicker version of that gungee brown i'm painting it on to my bubble wrap and i'm going to print it like that print it like that you see what i mean that it gives that just sort of regular without it being honeycomb just gives a bit of a regular pattern and if you've done it in one place i would suggest that you do it in a few more so we're on the home straight really and it's finishing touches time we talked about maybe adding some gold right at the beginning because we've got a little bit of glinty gold in this paper so i could use my gold leaf i could collage on that little gold flowery paper we spotted i've got a jelly roll gold pen that might be a possibility I've got some little bit of gold watercolor uh, that's from Viviva. Well, I'm going to start by just adding a little bit of gold here. Just a few little highlights. And gold leaf usually comes in sheets and you usually put it on with gold sides, which is a special glue. But because we're at the end of a long session, I'm just going to use a glue stick and hope that this works. Be very careful with gold leaf because it is so thin. And I only want little broken bits of it. I don't want anything terribly showy. And just a sort of a bit of a gold path, little flecks of it through my painting. Don't use this if you've got air conditioning on or a fan or anything like that because you'll just end up with a gold snowstorm. And then I'm going to just do a few little gold dots. Can you see how we've managed to get rid of quite a lot of that balloon just by breaking up the outline so it doesn't catch our eye so much? And you might and this is entirely up to you just want to use your your white marker to make a few highlights so i'm using a little bit of that viviva gold to put some tiny splatters i love this little set because it's in a cork palette which is really cool and i'm going to put a tiny wash so that's just too white these are very small touches at the end and of course it can be easy to go a little bit too far but it's such fun why not do a little bit extra so i'm using that really creamy yummy metallic to do a couple of the petals that we did in the um, the texture paste and just bring those out as gold as well and then i'm going to listen to my own advice which is don't fiddle and stop so just to recap what we've actually done we started or i started being inspired by bees and i broke the back of that blank page by writing some bee related 
thoughts and sayings and, and just got rid of that. I then collaged and protected that with some gesso. We used that those pretty napkins and, and built that up as well. All our papers had a reason for being used. So there was Winnie the Pooh because of his fixation with honey. There's music because of the song and buzz of the bees. Uh, there were flowers because, hey, that's where the nectar comes and from. We built up more flowers with that texture paste and the stencil. And we put some colour on. And then we came to our focal point, which was the bee. But by this time, my thought process changed a bit. And I've been thinking about bees and how they're so small, but together they work so brilliantly. And this had slightly morphed into actually we as humans are better together rather than being divided. So that's where my thought process went. And then, of course, we used a little bit of gold, a little bit of pen, a little bit of that lovely gold watercolour just to finish things off. And I tried to stop too soon rather than too late.